perhaps we could think a bit more about whether Kierkegaard should be considered a Christian. Yeah, no, it's a great question. So <clears throat> I do think that unless we take Kierkegaard's claims of Christianity seriously, which there, there are some scholars who, for example, have said that we need to de-Lutheranize Kierkegaard and kind of strip away these Christian um, dimensions. I think that's fundamentally to misunderstand Kierkegaard as an author, as a thinker, and as a philosopher. However, what does it mean then to take him seriously as a Christian? Um, well, th there's a variety of options here. So A, we could get into a debate about the difference between philosophy and theology. And so some argue that Kierkegaard is really better understood as a Christian theologian. Um, I think that's a mistake because his interlocutors were, again, sort of German idealism. Um, he certainly was engaging with a lot of um, theological figures, uh, Grundtvig and Martinson and um, Müller and others. So it was not that it was only Hegel in his mind, but it was the case that for Kierkegaard, engaging in theological debate for him was something that required a kind of authority that he refused to claim. So he differentiates between the genius and the apostle. And he says that the apostle is somebody who fundamentally claims the authority of what we might call the prophetic, right? It's somebody who says, thus saith the Lord, I speak on behalf of this mantle of ecclesial authority. And Kierkegaard refused that. So he wrote a book called Without Authority. He speaks as somebody who is a thinker, uh, who's encouraging us to wrestle with ideas, and for me, that's what makes him really philosophical. However, he's also a Christian doing this work. And that makes tons of sense because as an existential thinker, he's really interested in the lived perspectives that give rise to the views we hold, the ways we go about things, the beliefs that we think matter most. So when I think of Kierkegaard as a Christian thinker, I don't understand him to be somebody who is engaged in trying to um, apologetically encourage others to be Christians. I think instead he's trying to more like the apologetics of a Justin Martyr. He's trying to say, what is it that Christianity is about? What would it look like to, he never says be a Christian, but become a Christian. And in fact, when asked, you know, are you a Christian? His response is basically no, but I'm trying to become one. Right. Yeah. So part of this becoming instead of being emphasis is a real attempt to live into where we find ourselves asking particular philosophical yeah. questions. So we don't ever ask questions from zero. We don't we don't yeah. start with a blank slate. We always start from somewhere in a context with a history in bodies this is why I'm a postmodernist, for example, because I think postmodernism is just that reminder, right? You, you yeah. are not a, a disembodied, rational brain in a vat. You are, in fact, a lived, experienced, embodied set of um, perspectives and beliefs that all wrap up together in order to make certain questions pop as questions. So for Kierkegaard to ask the questions he's asking He's honest about, I'm trying to become a Christian. This matters deeply to me. And in fact, at the end of his life, he says he was never anything other than trying to think through what it means to become a Christian. <laughs> so when he talks about death and anxiety and despair and all these things that become you know, popular in existentialism, I, I don't think that we should see this as him trying to like overcome these things. They're <laughs> crucial to... What does it mean to talk about Christianity as an embodied finite being who's vulnerable and confused and perplexed and given to passions that I often regret? So that mm. for me, for Kierkegaard, helps us, whether we identify as Christian or not, he helps us recognize wherever we are, idolatry is always a temptation. We can mm. really believe yeah. our own hype. And so what Kierkegaard does, especially for those of us who do identify as Christian, Kierkegaard um, challenges us to always be more patient with the idea that we may not have it figured out. And this is why he's an enemy of what he calls objectivity in Christian life. He says we tend to think, you know, the question, is there a God, is the whole question. And he wants to say, no, it's not, is there a God? The question is, who am I in relation to God, right? And you say, well, yeah. God is in relation. 
He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but those questions of ontology and metaphysics are always secondary to questions of lived intentionality, lived purpose. So that's the thing for me that I find so compelling because too much of Christianity today is reducible to, whether on the right or the left, a kind of social manifestation of particular community norms, right? <laughs> are you pro-life? Do you care for this social issue? Are you standing for that? Do you vote this way or that way? And this is certainly distinctive in America, but I think it's a global phenomenon as well. We confuse what it is to become a Christian with what it looks like to be identified with people who use God talk to justify their politics, <laughs> right? Mm, and yeah. that's the thing Kierkegaard just wrecks. And I think mm. we are rightly wrecked in those ways. <laughs>